Last episode covered the Long Island Parkway system. We explored some of the historical land features left behind in the creation of the parkways. But you may be surprised to learn that the Northern State and Southern State were not the first parkways on Long Island. Before Robert Moses led the charge in revamping the road system, there was Long Island Motor Parkway. So what exactly is Long Island Motor Parkway? How come it no longer exists? And where can you see remnants of its existence in today's landscape? We are going to take a dive into the unique history behind Long Island Motor Parkway in this episode of Long Island's Hidden History. The idea for Long Island Motor Parkway was conceived in the early 1900s by William Vanderbilt, heir to the shipping and railroading empire built by his father, Cornelius Vanderbilt. The 70-mile limited access toll road which stretched from Fresh Meadows, Queens to Lake Ronkonkoma through Nassau and Suffolk. The dirt roads of the time were not equipped to handle high-speed automobile traffic, and Vanderbilt sought to bring about a new concept with Long Island Motor Parkway. Therefore, it became the first cement highway in the United States, allowing automobile enthusiasts to experience the full capabilities of their vehicles in ideal road conditions. It was also the first limited access highway in the world, meaning there were very few entry points and no intersections with other roads. Over 60 bridges were built so that all grade crossings with roadways and train tracks were eliminated. There was also no speed limit. These unique characteristics enabled motorists to open up the throttle and achieve better handling for the ultimate driving experience. Construction began in 1906, and by 1908, enough of the highway was completed for the first ever Vanderbilt Cup races, a racing event that took advantage of Motor Parkway's superior road conditions. This photo shows the grandstand where spectators would gather to watch the races in what is now Levittown. By 1910, extensions to Queens and Lake Ronkonkoma were completed. However, the racing events came to an end due to multiple deaths of drivers and spectators. Between the cancellation of racing and the construction of the Northern and Southern State Parkways in the 1920s, Motor Parkway quickly met its demise. Robert Moses rejected the idea of converting Motor Parkway into a commuter roadway due to its narrow width and the fact that two parkways on the north and south shores would serve more residents compared to a single parkway running through the middle of the island. Motor Parkway was therefore abandoned. Although Long Island boomed in development over the following decades, Motor Parkway's right of way remains largely visible in today's landscape. Between Dix Hills and Lake Ronkonkoma, the parkway was incorporated into Suffolk County's road system and is still in use today. Appropriately, it goes by the names Motor Parkway and Vanderbilt Parkway, and is signed as County Route 67. West of Dix Hills, there are many remnants of the parkway's abandoned right-of-way intact. Additionally, many of the toll plazas formerly situated at the entrance points are still visible. We are going to start at the eastern terminus in Lake Ronkonkoma and make our way back west to see exactly what remains. Situated on the edge of Lake Ronkonkoma, Vanderbilt and his associates established a high-class dining facility at the eastern terminus of Motor Parkway. This restaurant, known as the Petit Trinon, sat on the ground that is now the recreation center you see here. The club and restaurant, seen here, was modeled after a building on the grounds of Versailles and Paris, and hosted many dinner parties for Long Island's motoring elite. In January of 1958, the building caught fire and was destroyed. It was later replaced with the present structure. From Lake Ronkonkoma, the road survives as County Route 67, traveling through Ronkonkoma, Islandia, Hopog, Comac, and Dix Hills, terminating at Half Hollow Road. Driving along County Route 67, it is clear to see how Motor Parkway enabled an exciting driving experience. The straightaways and wide curves make it very tempting to push the speed limit. 
After the end of County Route 67, the right-of-way becomes visible again in Melville with this line in the trees just north of Rutland Road. North of Spanioli Road, just west of Route 110, the right-of-way passes through the facility of 110 Sand, where one of the former motor parkway bridges still stands supporting a sand hopper, as you could see in this photo. Just west in the woods of the old Bethpage Village Restoration, a former Motor Parkway bridge still stands. Out of more than 60 bridges built along Motor Parkway, this is just one of three that still stand within Nassau and Suffolk. The right-of-way then passes through Bethpage State Park, following the Bethpage Bikeway along the northern edge of the park. Along the strip, the toll plaza to access the parking lot sits in about the same spot as the former Motor Parkway toll plaza. Now the abandoned right-of-way through Nassau County is much more visible than in Suffolk, so we are first going to take a look at this map from 1947. Although Motor Parkway was decommissioned by 1947, this is the best map that shows the entirety of the abandoned path, passing through Bethpage, Levittown, East Meadow, Garden City, Mineola, East Williston, Albertson, New Hyde Park, and Great Neck before crossing into Queens. West of Bethpage Park, the road would curve south along what is now the Seaford Oyster Bay Expressway, as seen in this aerial shot from 1950. The right-of-way is still visible at the end of Sophia Street and Bethpage. West of the SOB, the road would curve back to the west and continue straight through Bethpage. Most of the right-of-way through this area is still intact as a grassy corridor serving as a right-of-way for power lines. Between routes 107 and 106 in Levittown, the road would curve slightly north, leaving another grassy corridor just north of Orchid Road before curving back to the south. Just west of the Wansaw Parkway in East Meadow, it would curve slightly north again and follow what is today Salisbury Park Drive along the northern edge of Eisenhower Park. Within Eisenhower Park, the road would follow the walking trail along the southern edge of the Red Golf Course. It would then cross Merrick Avenue and continue into East Garden City, running right into what is now Ring Road South within Roosevelt Field Mall. Ring Road South falls in the exact spot as the former Long Island Motor Parkway. Just west of the mall, at the dead end of Raymond Court in Garden City, a very blatant stretch of Motor Parkway's right-of-way remains, partially a wooded area and partially a parking lot for the adjacent baseball fields. The Blue Stone parking lot was constructed in early 2020. However, Motor Parkway's pavement is actually still present underneath, as seen in this photo taken just before the Blue Stone was laid. This photo shows the area while Motor Parkway was still intact. Just west of here, you'll notice a small inroad called Vanderbilt Court. This is one of many streets along the right of way that were given names to hint at their former existence as Long Island Motor Parkway. The Garden City entrance to Motor Parkway was located right around this location near what is now Clinton Road. You can see the toll plaza in these photos while it was still active. In 1989, the toll plaza was actually picked up and moved to a new location on 7th Street in Garden City, just east of Franklin Avenue. This photo shows the building being transported through Garden City to its new location by a police escort. When it finally arrived, it was restored and now stands as the headquarters for the Garden City Chamber of Commerce. The right-of-way then curves north through Garden City. At Old Country Road, it runs into the Eagle Rock Mineola apartment complex, where the inroad falling on the right-of-way has been named Vanderbilt Drive. Just north of here, the right-of-way is visible again at the end of Voice Road and Carl Place. Between Westbury Avenue and Jericho Turnpike in Mineola, several dead-end streets allow visibility into the right-of-way as it cuts through the residential area. At the end of Rudolph Drive, just south of Jericho Turnpike, the house situated just adjacent to the right-of-way actually used to be one of Motor Parkway's toll plazas and has since been converted into a private residence. This photo is of the original toll lodge. As you can see, the front section of the house matches up perfectly to the shape of the toll lodge. The right-of-way then continues further north through East Williston and the Wheatley Hills Golf Club. 
Just west of the Wheatley Hills Golf Club lies one of the most fascinating remnants of Motor Parkway. As the right-of-way crosses Roslyn Road on the border of East Williston and Albertson, there is a hill on the west side of the street. This hill was actually the former support for the bridge across Roslyn Road. A quick climb up this hill reveals an entire section of Motor Parkway that is still intact, west of Roslyn Road. After the road was decommissioned, the bridge was demolished, and the brick wall at the top of the hill was constructed to prevent anyone who may have decided to drive on the road from continuing any further. West of this spot lies one of the only drivable sections of Motor Parkway still intact in Nassau County. East of Willis Avenue, the roadway remains as an access road for the Williston Park Pool Complex. You can tell this is the original Motor Parkway road surface by the asphalt and concrete construction. Across Willis Avenue, a section of the road leading into a municipal facility has been appropriately named Highway Drive. From there, the right-of-way is visible on the map through Albertson and New Hyde Park until we reach another very fascinating remnant. Just east of New Hyde Park Road, the third remaining Motor Parkway bridge stands fully intact at the end of Old Courthouse Road. This has been officially designated as a landmark as you can see by the sign in place. This photo from 1972 shows the bridge while the parkway surface was more visible. The underside of the bridge is inscribed with the year 1909, the year this section of the parkway was completed. After this, another drivable section of the original roadway remains intact just east of Lake Club Road in Great Neck, providing access to baseball fields and a track utilized by Great Neck schools. Same as near Willis Avenue, the middle of the road is paved in asphalt with concrete strips on either side. Finally, after crossing into Queens, Motor Parkway has been transformed into a scenic walking trail, labeled on the map as Vanderbilt Parkway. The original bridges are still intact all along the trail. Additionally, the cement posts that once supported the Motor Parkway guardrail are still in place. As the trail leads into Cunningham Park in Fresh Meadows, it is interrupted by the Clearview Expressway. Although Motor Parkway continued straight beyond this point, the trail curved sharply north, leading to a tunnel underneath the Clearview Expressway. By going through the tunnel, you are let out onto the other side of the Clearview into a cluster of baseball fields. South of the baseball fields, you can find the remnants of the stretch of Motor Parkway that was abandoned to build the Clearview Expressway. Deep in the wooded area just south of the trail, the same cement posts from the rest of the trail are still in place, indicating that this was the former path of Motor Parkway. By following a straight line from the point in Cunningham Park where the trail curves north, it passes directly through where the cement posts remain before becoming the Vanderbilt Parkway Trail once again a little further west. The trail then curves north along Francis Lewis Boulevard, ending just south of the LIE. This was the former western terminus of Long Island Motor Parkway. I'd like to give a special thanks to the folks at VanderbiltCupRaces.com for their extensive collection of photos and research on Long Island Motor Parkway. If you want to dive further into the history of Motor Parkway beyond the remnants that are visible today, I highly recommend you visit the site. So with the transformation of Long Island into a densely packed suburban area, it is clear to see how many remnants of the former Long Island Motor Parkway were seemingly skipped over by developers, allowing nature to take over. Once you're aware of the parkway's former route, it is not hard to spot the places where the right-of-way is still visible. I encourage you to check them out in your travels. Stay tuned for Episode 4 of Long Island's Hidden History.